So pharmaceutical industry. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry is really quite a vast uh, network of companies. About 50% of the global pharmaceutical companies are located in the United States, and about 40% of them are located in Western Europe. The other 10% are scattered about the world, and these are just a few of the major players of the pharmaceutical industry. Companies like Genentech, Amgen, Merck, Pfizer, Sanofi, Aventis, and Novartis really make up a lot of the big players in that space. Uh, approximately uh, 1.7 to 1.9 million people work in the pharmaceutical industry worldwide. That's a lot of people and it gives you a sense of the scope of the industry out there in the broader uh, economy. Let me see if this will advance here. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry has gone through a lot of transitions and a lot of development over the past couple of centuries. Uh, back in the 19th century, uh, the pharmaceutical industry started coming into its heyday. Uh, given the need for uh, countries to, uh, to treat wounded soldiers and, uh, and, uh, and struggle with pandemic diseases, vaccines, antibiotics, and other kinds of uh, treatments were created so that people could have a better quality of life and overcome some of these uh, illnesses. Things like the flu and uh, 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 diphtheria, tetanus, rabies, and other kinds of uh, issues seemed to predominate the early 19th and late 19th century. Then going into the 20th century, we ended up with things like antibiotics, insulin, a global scale, flu vaccines, polio, and so forth. And today in the 21st century, we're starting to get into the world of targeted therapies where, um, where now we're no longer dealing with just uh, large scale epidemic type diseases, but we're now dealing with more uh, boutique diseases where we have diseases that make up very much smaller portions of the population, but have every bit as devastating an impact on those groups. And so as we move into the 21st century, the pharmaceutical industry will take on a bigger, um, broader perspective. Uh, we will be penetrating into more parts of the global economy. Well, typically when one thinks of the um, pharmaceutical industry, there are several kinds of divisions. Uh, we have the traditional large-scale pharmaceutical companies that design, develop, uh, commercialize, and deploy uh, pharmaceuticals. Then there are the newcomers to the uh, business, which are biotechnology companies. These are companies that deal with biological therapies and biological treatments. And then there are generic manufacturers. Once drugs become uh, available and are off patent, then income other companies to try to offer the same medications uh, at a reduced cost, thus reducing the amount that consumers have to pay at the cash register. And so uh, there are some important distinctions between these various kinds of companies. For example, traditional pharmaceutical companies spend a lot of time developing and discovering new drugs. So too do biotechnology companies. A lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of research goes into uh, understanding what kind of drugs and opportunities there are out there for development of drugs. And then the process for turning it into a commercialized uh, bu uh, product that can be sold on the open market. Uh, biotechnology companies and pharmaceutical companies then also create diagnostic tools that can be used to help assess and understand the extent of the diseases and the extent to which the treatments they're offering are actually making a difference. Generic manufacturers, on the other hand, worry about making exact copies of what used to be once novel products in a space. Uh, but they are limited in terms of their scope. They do not come up with new drugs. They're not in the business of developing new drugs. They're in the business of manufacturing existing drugs, but doing it on a much cheaper scale. Uh, now, there's a reason for generics appearing on the scene, and they usually appear on the scene much later than the pharmaceutical companies because the pharmaceutical companies and biotechnology companies have legal rights that we'll talk about here in just a moment. 